Now let's move on to something very relevant, seismic waves. Okay, so since we're an earthquake country, I thought it was only appropriate that we uh, have a little bit of discussion about this. So two of the main kinds of waves that earthquakes generate, earthquakes generate are uh, what's called P waves and S waves. The, pre -wave, the P waves, or the primary waves, are pressure waves, and the S waves, or the secondary waves, or shear waves, those are transverse waves. So those are two kind of rate, uh, waves that we've studied so far. So this data was collected by Harvey Mudd seismographs by a physics professor, Professor Lysenda. This is from the 1994 Northridge quake. This is from one of the aftershocks. What's neat here is that P waves and S waves, they travel at different speeds. So P waves are a little faster than S waves. So that means you actually you're going to receive the signal from the P waves first. And you can see on the seismograph that it actually shows a different kind of signal. So you can really tell the two different kinds of waves apart. If you know when the two waves arrive, so you know the time difference between them, and you know the speed difference, what can you learn? You can learn where it starts. You can learn how far away it is. So if you know how far from Claremont it is, you can draw a little radius around Claremont. And then if you have several other stations with similar data, you can triangulate, and that's how you can find the position of an epicenter. OK. Another cool thing. So here is a cutout of the Earth. So if you have an earthquake over on one side of the Earth, it's going to generate waves out in all different directions more or less. It's going to generate P waves and S waves. Up here, you see that we, we feel both the P waves and the S waves. But we noticed a really odd thing. If you were on the other side of the Earth here, we only got P waves. Any idea why? So it turns out that S waves they can't propagate in liquids. There's not enough restoring force to get uh, to keep it propagating through. It dissipates very quickly. So based on the fact that no S waves were able to travel through the core of the Earth, that tells us that the Earth must have a liquid core. So that's pretty neat. We were able to tell that just by looking at seismic waves. <coughs> 